Serapis. Hello studious minds and welcome back to Pagan Philosophy, the channel where we strive to further our understanding of what it truly means to love knowledge. That's a mouthful. Today we're going to be discussing education in antiquity, specifically ancient Greece. Now as I've said in other videos, it's difficult to mash all the Greek city-states together seeing as how different some of them may have been. But today we're going to be singling out three specific Greek city-states. Athens, Alexandria, and Sparta. Now, of course, Alexandria was in ancient Egypt, but we're going to be talking about its educational system under Greek and later Roman rule. So on with the video. We'll begin by establishing the ancient pagan view of knowledge. In the majority of cities we're going to be talking about, education was for the privileged. If you were poor, you simply were not educated the same, if at all. So education specifically for the Greeks and the later Egyptians would come to be associated with the gods. The Egyptians had multiple gods associated with academia, specifically the god Tote. Yes guys, Tote, aspirated. Try not to throw Thoth too frequently. And the Greeks would also have gods associated with learning and knowledge, some of which were Hermes and even Athena. And academia was combined with studies that we don't learn anymore in our modern day universities. You would learn astronomy alongside astrology because to the ancients, they were one and the same. And in the Athenian academies, you would learn that the absolute properties of numbers were divine. The later Neoplatonists would actually come to recognize the traditional gods of Homer as mathematical relationships. So academia, as it was practiced by pagan intellectuals, would come to be associated with pagan religious ideas. Naturally, Christians would not look too kindly on education in these cultures because they did have overtly religious ideas sprinkled throughout them. Ancient universities would have doubled as temples. They were places where the gods resided. Now, let's get into specifics. Let's start with Alexandria, the big one. During the time of Alexander the Great, he would commission those under his control to pursue knowledge. After his death, Ptolemy I would commission Demetrius of Phaleron, an Aristotelian philosopher, with the duty of developing what would later become the Library of Alexandria. The goal was to establish a place where the knowledge of all different cultures would be combined into one. So a rule was put into order that any ships that docked at Alexandria would be detained until they could be searched for books. If any were found, the crew members were obligated to stay until copies of those books could be made for installation into the library. To get back to the religious side of things, the Serapium would be built and would later be called the daughter of the Library of Alexandria. The Serapium was devoted to the Greco-Egyptian god Serapis, a combination of Greek and Egyptian gods. This temple would house a portion of the literary works of the library, and students from the library would frequent this temple in worship. So the blatantly pagan nature of education in Alexandria would play a role in the Christian-led riots that would later destroy the Serapium. Moving on to Sparta. Around the mid 5th century BC, education, athletics, and warfare would be inextricably combined in Sparta. Academia was to raise good soldiers and students were required to perform athletic feats during their schooling. This would become commonplace amongst the Greek city-states. Interestingly though, Sparta became open to educating females. Of course, their lessons focused on different things and their beatings and physical demands were far less severe. Sparta would also come to adhere to a pure gene mentality. Those born genetically mutated or even sickly would be discarded at a very young age. This was seemingly in an attempt to raise a strong, capable society. And in addition, such births would have been seen as a curse from the gods. Children would be raised by women until the age of seven, and then would go on to study and train until around the age of 20. In order to accustom them to an uncomfortable life, students were required to sleep on the floor, steal for their food, and were barely fed. Boys would even compete in front of spectators to see who can take the worst beating, sometimes resulting in the boy's death. Now, Athens. Athens would come to appreciate a less brutal lifestyle and would be the first to separate the military and education. But unlike Spartan girls, Athenian girls would not be educated nearly as much. Likewise, foreigners and slaves would be excluded from academic pursuits. Instead of using papyrus, the ancient Greek equivalent to our paper, students would write with a stylus and a wooden tablet covered with wax that they could scratch into. Athenian education would also include physical activity and students would train at gymnasiums that would double as classrooms. Basic students would learn letters and numbers, but studying the poets and the historians was reserved for the upper upper class. Teachers were not only required to teach the students the subjects themselves, they were also required to nurture the students' ethical well-being. 
Athenian moral good standing revolved around one being wise and good. Later on, Athens would see an educational reformation under Socrates, Plato, and the Sophists. Education would become politically minded. It was to prepare one to make a point and to win any argument that they were in. Socrates would argue that one's studies should not be aimed at becoming more dominant and powerful, but should be aimed at pursuing the knowledge itself. This idea would completely alter the way the Athenians viewed education. And that's our video on education in ancient Greece. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe and let us know if you're interested in hearing about the educational systems of other cultures. Eventually, I would like to put out videos where I can explain some of these academic ideas in more depth. I would give many lessons on some of the studies as they were viewed back then, like math, astronomy, music. Let me know if you guys have an interest in learning more about these disciplines. But until next time, friends, stay studious.